purpose of the RAI is to drive excellence in architecture. And we do this to support and represent the membership. We have a structure that we've put in place, we believe that can deliver that, and that is our council, which are, has 33 members on it from a very wide demographic, and that's the policy engine of the Institute. We then have the board, which looks after the business of the Institute and looks after the registration aspects. We then have a range of committees who look after a very wide range of topics. These are passionate experts in various fields, obviously things like housing at the moment, sustainability are key ones that we're working on, but also looking after universal design, education, CPD, etc. All of this is then supported by the executive who work every day on behalf of the membership to drive these policies forward. And collectively, we all work to deliver for the members and for the public. And we would encourage as many members as possible to get involved with the Institute's work. Like many members, I knew the RIAI was there, but didn't really get involved. And I was asked in 2014 to become involved in the uh, Building Control Amendments Regulations Committee. And for the first time, I got to see just how many people are involved and how much work gets done within the RIAI. I've only been on council since January of this year, um, and uh, my remit really is to represent members who are involved in architectural education, um, but I'm also an architect in private practice, so I'm interested in, in all areas of architecture and, and professionalism. I think it's really important to have a really diverse representation on the council, so I'm really delighted to be there representing architects in education, um, and also you know, being able to, to speak to the professional practice aspect of that as well. I've never gone into a meeting here where I didn't know more when I left. And like when I was much younger, uh, to have the opportunity of meeting and working with people like David Keane or Arthur Gibney or later Brian O'Connell with a sharp intellect, people who are, you know, bastions in the profession, was an opportunity I couldn't have had any other way. And I've really enjoyed it. And I learned something from it, maybe not as much as they knew, but I learned a bit. I trained in London, I came back to Dublin. Uh, I didn't know many of my peers there and I found through, I, I first joined the practice committee in about 2004, I think. Um, and I found that, that that was a hugely rewarding process in that it opened up uh, an interesting process, both from a social and a professional point of view. When I ran for council, I was working as a sole pr practitioner. So was, and I think like a lot of architects, quite, I was quite isolated from the profession. And, uh, and I think coming in, you know, on a regular basis, meeting other architects, talking about various issues, has been, has been hugely beneficial uh, to me and to my practice. I am the architectural graduate representative on the council, the RIAI. It's very important because there's that step between when graduates leave college um, and before they become registered architects, that there's a bit of, I suppose, ambiguity to it. And I think that having a representative there on the council is really important to communicate challenges and to even have someone to ask what happens next within that gap and how to reach that membership or that point as a registered architect. What we've got under our remit are things like the conference. All the publications come under our oversight, the, the, the annual review, uh, Architecture Ireland comes out six times a year. Uh, that's all under us. Plus anything else, the Women in Architecture, which has been so successful this year, and anything else that is a publication or to do with the public. The committees typically meet um, every couple of months and they review pr proposals from committee members and others as to how we might better meet the objective of that particular committee. And the council, I suppose, is, uh, is different in that it takes on board all of the recommendations from the various committees, um, policy papers, proposals, um, any guidance notes that are being prepared, um, reviews them carefully and uh, makes decisions based on, on those proposals. So, so, the, so the council members are elected to be the kind of the, the, the the representative voice of the members in, 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 in actioning any of these activities. The way the committees work, it's been streamlined the last few years. So we try to uh, set a direction and then we follow under the strategy, the overall strategy that has been set out by the RAI at Council. The staff are the backbone and the staff work remarkably well and always have done. And I have enormous respect for them. I mean, what people like myself do, we come in and we just throw an eye over things. We don't do the hard work. There are a huge amount of things that the RAAI does well, maybe not absolutely perfectly all the time, but uh, there is a strategic plan 
which we are working to, which is a written strategic plan, it's a definitive document. That is being adhered to, that has been developed, that has been worked forward on a number of fronts. I think that's going particularly well. We've also set up a student group, uh, which has happened for the first time. So now there's an immediate engagement by students with the RIAI before they become registered architects. And I think that's hugely rewarding, seeing this young talent coming through and they're bright, brilliant people coming through on this level and to see them uh, and, and bringing them into the RIAI, getting them involved and listening to them and, and they have very valued inputs and opinions. Even the, the new form of contracts, I mean, to see the discussion that goes on behind that, behind the scenes and to get really good input from architects who have administered those contracts and who can you know, raise queries based on the challenges that they've faced in administering those and try and input that into um, how the contracts might be formulated in the future. I think that's really important um, to get that kind of bottom-up input from council members. For education in particular, we are looking after the element of CPD. We visit the schools, we look after uh, issues relating to entry to the profession, uh, as well as accreditation for existing members. I mean, one of the things that I was particularly happy with when, we, when I was involved with the um, Architecture and Public Affairs were the changes that we made to the Annual Architecture Awards, where we decided that it was really important to visit all of the shortlisted buildings. So I was involved in the, the, the first round of visits uh, two years ago, and to me that was a really, really worthwhile, valuable and meaningful change to the process, because although the awards in the previous iteration had been a fantastic um, acknowledgement of the work produced by members, the ability to visit them and to properly assess them and to look at the broader attributes of, of each shortlisted building. My feeling is that that made the, makes the awards even more meaningful than they have been before. I'll be honest and say, uh, at the end of most committee meetings, I'm running back to the office terrified uh, of all the issues I should know. Um, and what, what it has highlighted is where the gaps are. And I mean, it's becoming more and more difficult for an architect to practice on their own. These uh, issues face all practitioners and, you know, together uh, through collective responsibility and discussion, we're trying to make life easier and trying to get through the, the, the process that is architecture. I think architecture is very much a collaborative uh, process and I think that's reflected in the way things happen in the Institute and I find it very informative and personally useful to be involved. So for me that's the return I get in putting my time into certain aspects of the work of the Institute. It's a great way to try and implement change for practitioners. If they have an issue with something they can join a, a committee and be involved in the change process and, and you know so it's our institute as opposed to a, a perception that it's somebody else's institute and it's been run by no names i mean i think i would encourage everyone to get involved as much as possible it's i found it hugely rewarding for at, at stages there are there is a workload um but on the whole i think if the, the, the rewards far outstrip the, the work input the rai works best as something that's really collegiate the, 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 the mass of our knowledge combined is so much more than any one person can know. And you'll always, if you have an issue or a problem or something to be confronted or something to be dealt with, you'll always find out more from your peers than you'll know to start with. And the support is generous and decent and well pointed. And so, you know, even looked at selfishly, you will get a lot out of it. But apart from that, you add to what other people need. And I think that's a generous and decent thing to do.